When life throws you a curveball, how are you going to handle adversity? Welcome to the Fearless Mindset Podcast, where you're about to go on a journey as I interview security, business, and entertainment leaders on what it takes to stay fearless. I'm your host, Mark Ludlow, and enjoy today's episode. So I spend a lot of the time getting out of people's way and listening. When they tell me, listen, you're good at this, go do that. I listen, <laughs> right? Right. And, and, and if you mess it up, then just know you're going to be just as accountable as I expect to be. So I create the environment where feedback is how we grow. So I expect you to give me clear and concise and honest feedback. If I'm messing it up, I expect you to tell me. Because if you're messing it up, you can expect I'm going to tell you, right? So it's right. only fair. And that is a part that's not also, that, that's not also mm-hmm. common. Mm-hmm. Like Usually it's one way, right? It's top down usually. It is. Some, yep. some of that is environment. Mm -hmm. Right. Some of that is environment, especially classically trained environments. That's the hierarchical structure of policing and military organizations. You're not paid to question orders. Mm -hmm. But but what happens is when you change to corporate industry, it's not that you're questioning orders, but you have the opportunity to understand what is the mission. Right. What is the actual intent of the mission? Because that will change how you go about it. Right. In our previous careers, we weren't always exposed to all of that. No, not at all. <laughs> Nor were we allowed to ask all the time. Exactly. Right? You better not ask. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's about so, your pay grade or rank. You're yeah. Screwed. So that so that's part of the transition that's tough is because you'll get people that ask. And it's not because they're being flippant or they don't know. They're or, curious. Or, or the, yeah, they, they actually want to know what are we trying to do? Right. Because that will that will allow me to come up with more ideas on how we actually accomplish the mission that we're actually trying to achieve. Right. When I'm limited to my information, I'll be limited in my creativity. And it's almost we're better off creating a safe place for people to operate in the creative genius. Even in the corporate environment, leadership, you get more done. Yeah, like I no like doubt. my team, my director of operation. He's good at what he does. I suck at it. And I know that that's my weakness. My weakness is his amazing strength. So I just like I back off. Uh, my guys do their thing. And then, it, it, boom, magically, it happens. Well, and, and when he needs you, I'm sure he tells you, hey, I oh, need yeah. you to do this, to get me these, I need you to give me this money or go talk to this guy and get him out of right. the way so we can do, right? Oh, yeah. so, so, so so there's that kind of stuff too. And yeah. and, I, and I, th- I think that's the amazing part is it's a it's a journey, not a destination, right? What we used to do. It is a journey. The, the, the rules change, but that's also what makes it difficult when you're making the transition. Mm-hmm. It's because a lot of us spend years in the classical environment where, you can't challenge that as quote. You can't ask questions. You do what you're told. It's not your greater rank. And you're a silent professional that just does what they're told. And that mm-hmm. is awesome in that environment is that is exactly what you should do. Right. The challenge is if you do that very same thing in a corporate mm-hmm. environment, it will lead to your demise on accident. Absolutely. It will. Because you're going to be held accountable to stuff that you're supposed to know. And you just chose not to ask because you didn't uh, know you could. Right. True, nobody told true. you you could ask. Right. What was your big, what was your biggest obstacle, say, leaving you know the, the government side, going to the private sector? What the, I think you said uh, talking too much or being a know it all. What was the private sector biggest struggle for you to overcome? Fear, fear, the pure fears. fear. Wow. Okay. Fear is debilitating, and, and anybody it that is. tells you that that they just have this thing wired is lying to, right? I, I think when you're mm. comfortable and when you're comfortable in what you're doing, when you've done it for so long, you, you become comfortable. And, and you become comfortable in your capabilities, right? Mm-hmm. So when you're making a leap, you know, your, your parachute can't open until you jump. So it's, 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 it's scary. And you hear all these stories about the metrics and you, you know, you have to, you know, they fire people in the corporate industry for whatever. Well, well, the reality is that may be true, but at the end of the day, if you talk to security professionals that have made the change, how many do you actually know that have been fired? Not a whole lot because the world's still a dangerous place and it still has risks and they still need people that have expertise in that space, right? So the fear is fear of not leading people correctly, fear of not listening completely, fear of not changing fast enough, um, fear of not being able to partner because I, because I can't hear what my partners are actually asking. Um, so fear it was the biggest challenge for sure. And, it's st- and it remains that. Um, because you really do want to be helpful and you really want to do the right thing, but it's not debilitating to me. It doesn't stop me from doing 
um, if anything, it motivates me to push through, right? What, what was the moment in your career where you're able to push through with that fear? Um, you know, I had a, I had a mentor in a previous, uh, at a previous employer where I felt like a crazy man. I said, I know this is the right thing to do. I can't necessarily articulate all of the reasons why I believe that so strongly or, or even how to do it, but this is the right thing to do. And we need to lean in this direction. And somebody gave me some advice that said, don't stop walking, just take shorter steps. Because when you're looking at people and they're, they're looking confused to you, they're trying to process what you said, because that's not what we're used to hearing. Uh, wow. Right. Cool nugget. That's so, so, you know, we see the world as we are, not as it is. That's, that's an important thing to realize. Mm, we see the world as we are, not as it is. So our perspective is, in fact, just that our perspective true so it's not always an either or sometimes it's a both and and that was another thing that that i realized is that i'm only looking from where i can see (laughs) that's another (laughs) half that i can that i'm 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 oblivious to sure once you're once you're aware of that it may change both of you absolutely oh (laughs) i had no idea right (laughs) sure So, so so there's that right yeah, and so in leadership, what what is what has helped you develop that leadership? To I mean, you're in Pepsi Cola in that position there. What what type of leadership have you grasped through reading? Who's your biggest uh, resource in leadership that really helped you along? Um, well, I could I could tell you that the biggest resource is followership. So mm-hmm. there's there's live folks that do it well and have done it for a long time. Sure. So, so you look at who people follow. It doesn't, doesn't matter their greater rank. Yeah. Right. Greater rank is a title. You watch who people follow, watch who people lean into when they talk, whose words they hang on and you engage with those people and you learn what makes them tick. And typically it's, it's personal engagement, right? Is that an emotional connection? Uh, it can be. And that's typically what moves people faster, right? Because people mm-hmm. respond to different styles of leadership. Mm-hmm. Um, with regards to books, man, I, I just, matter of fact, I, I just had literally three boxes that I've taken out of my o- office and I just put them in the garage right before I got on this call. And there's all kinds of leadership books, everything from, from um, military authors. Um, mm-hmm. There's two books in, in, uh, in particular that come to mind. Um, What's the one about uh I forgot the title now? Something about a ship. Uh, oh, I don't I don't want to butcher this man's great work, but there's there's a couple of military military mm-hmm. leadership books in which one was a Navy admiral and he was talking about commanding his ship. I want to say it was it's this it it's your ship or something like that. Sure. Um there was another one that was um the mission, the men and me, I forgot who wrote it, but it mm-hmm. talks about, you know, when you put your men or women first, they mm-hmm. complete the mission with, which then takes care of you. And it was leadership lessons from a green beret. Wow. Um, but then there's corporate leadership books that just talk about, um, and there's different styles, even ones that are controversial or that you might not see eye to eye with mm-hmm. the, how they think through problems. Like when you think about the Elon Musk's of the world, to some people that may be repulsive, to some people that may be the greatest mm-hmm. thing since sliced bread. Sliced bread. Sure. But what we do know is with regards to business acumen, this individual has had success after success in spaces where people have questioned it all the time. So the sure. other thing is, is you, you, I tend to lean into people that other people question. Because the reality of the earth is everything that you're experiencing was created by another man or woman that sure. probably was no smarter than you in the first place. So why not you? <laughs> why not if, you? If, if you can't believe it, other people won't believe it either. So you have to believe and commit to it first and passionately. Otherwise, mm-hmm. people won't follow it. And when you're half in on a belief or, or a leadership um, tenant, you're giving permission for other people to be half in too. 
Um, so there's a number of different books and, and I wish I could write off the title. So I, I was just ill prepared for that question. Yeah, it's all right. No sweat. But I, but I have a li- literally hundreds of, of different styles and types of books, um, from Mao Zedong to, to, mm-hmm. you know, the, the laws of power. I mean, there's all types of stuff that give you information, managing change. Um, some are, some are prescriptive, some are anecdotal, but all of them will teach you something. Um, and for me, I like to be a student of leadership because I've had all types of leaders. I, you know, I'm blessed and lucky to have a great team of leaders now. Um, and, and, and most recently consecutively. Yeah. Sure. So, so it's, that's that I've had a bunch of bad ones recently, but mm-hmm. even from the ones that whose style I would not emulate, there mm-hmm. are parts of it. There are parts of those styles that I would. Okay. Right. Or, or there are things that I would not repeat because they've taught me that if you use this type of style in this type of environment, it's less than effective. And if your job is to try to be effective and, and purposeful, mm-hmm. you know, everybody teaches you something, every single one of them. So Absolutely. How many books do you read? You must be an avid reader. I, I am now. Now I've gone to audiobooks. The greatest thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest, you're the, cheap, the greatest you're thing. Cheap. Oh well, yeah, but but when you're on the road quite a bit, what I found yes. is that's the most efficient way to do it is instead yep. of where I, where I used to watch movies on the plane or or listen to music, now I fire up an audio book, and um, it, it allows me to 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 continue to learn there when I'm in transit while I'm relaxing, um, and and optimize my time a little differently, and that's relatively go. new, right? Because I found myself it is. getting distracted. When I'm trying to read, I get distracted. There's noise. I'd look up and I'd forget what I just read. I'd read it again. Right. Um, and, and, you know, when I'm traveling and doing all these other things where I was relaxing, this is another way to actually relax but learn while I'm doing it. And, and sometimes it's totally unrelated to, you know, to, to what work. I'm doing or where I'm going or even work. Or it's even just a subject. peace of mind or make you relax. It's just something different, right? Something different. Um, you know, I, mean, I was... Go ahead. I was going to say, I was I was ask in... you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's your time been on the road for you? You've been on the road a lot lately, right? Traveling quite a bit. Well, well, well recently, um, I'm based out of New York, um, but uh, because North America is primarily my responsibility, um, we're a global company, but we have we have different teams that support different regions specifically. Um, I've been on the road a lot recently, partly because now that the the pandemic restrictions have loosened up. It allows me to engage differently. And I like to lean into the connection part of my strength. Um, And there's things that I can pick up when I go to see people in their environment and let them tell me a story about how we can be helpful. When I understand what they're going through in their perspective, it allows us to shape and tailor um, our assistance to what they actually need, right? Because we see what they see, we're feeling what they're feeling. Um, so part of that road running is that part of that is, you know, I work for an organization that's everywhere all the time, right? Right. We're smiles in every aisle. And we're, <laughs> uh, so, so when you think about Frito-Lay or Quaker or Gatorade or Pepsi-Cola or, you know, any of these products, they're recognizable, they're broad, um, they're enjoyable, they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. Well, that means we have people everywhere that make, move, and sell our wonderful products, and I, I, I need to go see them. I want to make sure they're good. I, I, I want to hear it from them, and I want to be in touch. I want to have my ear to the needs of our people because our job is to support them. At the end of the day, my job is to support them. They make, move, and sell it. I just want to keep them safe so they can go home at the end of the night and spend time with their loved ones. So, so you're you're traveling across the country. You're going probably grocery stores, distribution centers, checking in the truckers, and talking to everybody. Okay. Anything and everything I can get my hands on, warehouses, um, wow. manufacturing plants, uh, stores, district. I mean, anybody that will allow me to go with them, I want to, I want to, I want to share their experience. No kidding. Um, wow. Because to, to know the business and to know uh-huh. what, what, what everybody's dealing with helps us to be more effective as a team because we can, we can absolutely relate. I don't want you to tell me a story that I can't relate to. I, I want to ride with you. I want to see, mm. right. So when you say it's dangerous, let me go with you tomorrow morning. I'll meet you at four o'clock in the morning. I'll go on your route with you. I'll, you know, if you'll let me, I'll help stack them up too. Because when I truly understand what you're saying, now, when you say I need help, I understand exactly what you mean. Right. So you'll so, be out there with the guy in the truck and you've been stacking bottles of Pepsi or product too, just to see what he's going through. 
we, I, I, I've, I've absolutely done that. And I've also, I've also new to, to PepsiCo. So part of it is, is that it's, it's being deliberate and intentional and authentic mm. in how I'm learning the business. Wow. You know, it's, it's, it's one thing for me to ask you to tell me, and I'm not saying that this is the right thing or even that this is a yeah. sustainable thing, right. but it is necessary because this business is humongous. And I, the, mm. the most effective way as a support mechanism to engage other people is to actually engage with other people. Totally. Right. A lived experience wow. is different than total the shared one, right? So here you are in this role, BP, C C suite, you doing your thing, and then all of a sudden you're jumping on a jet to go to Portland, Oregon. He might be going to Walmart, you can be Fred Meyer, and this person, one of your employees, is having an issue. And you got to check things out. So you're you, your boots on the ground with your employee, trying to figure out how you can make his life well, better. Well, listen, I, we, we have a, I, I, you know, I can't act like I'm this one man band and do all this stuff in a vacuum because that's just not true. Sure. We have a, a very robust team of professionals that are very good at this and they've been doing it for a long time. Mm-hmm. I owe it to them too, to yeah. understand what they're dealing with. So sure. part of this is because, because I'm, I'm less than a year in this role, mm-hmm. I, I want to understand what my teammates are going through. So I know how to support them the right way. Mm-hmm. And, and the best way to do that is to get a realistic and evaluation of both. So I'll ask them, hey, you're getting ready to go here. Can I come with you? Not because I want to micromanage, because I don't have that experience. I need to see. Mm-hmm. So when, you're, when, you, when you say DC, well, what is that? If that's a distribution center, well, what is that? What does that look like? Mm-hmm. Can I come and take a look? Can, can we do a walk around? Can I see what you see? Can you tell me why you gave this bit of advice? Because I, I don't have that context. The State Department didn't have distribution centers. <laughs> no, they didn't. Right? We, we weren't a manufacturing company, right? We right. Were a, a diplomatic company. Exactly. We were a diplomatic agency. So, <laughs> so, so, I, so I, and, and neither was Yum Brand. So, so I say that because some of these differences and some of these unique attributes of some of these corporations, the better I understand the business, the better partner I can be. And that, and that piece of advice is something that is invaluable. Somebody taught that to me, and it has been the single biggest thing that has helped with my effectiveness because the one thing that you cannot fake is authenticity. Everybody can see through crap in a minute, right? You work with people all the time that says, that dude's full of crap. They met him for 10 seconds, and they'll say, <laughs> full of crap. You don't know why they said it, but there was something about it. Yep. That, right? Yep, right. So, so, so I say that because... That's not what I want to be. I want to be mm-hmm. helpful. And to be helpful, mm-hmm. I, I can't sell you anything. Mm-hmm. I'm here to help you. I'm not selling anything. Right. And in order to understand, I, I have to ask you and I have to listen to you. Sometimes I have to go see it and touch it for myself to, under, to say, right. How many times have people told you, well, you'll never get it. You, you just won't understand because you haven't done it. Yep, I can't, exactly. I can't, I can't pretend that I'm going to do every single role, right? I'm not going to drive the forklift and pick it up and ship <laughs> it and put it in the truck. I'm not doing that. Right. Yeah. But, but if you're delivering product at four in the morning in Compton, California, I probably should go to Compton, California and say, is this a, perspe- is this a perspective thing mm-hmm. or is this an environmental thing? Mm-hmm. Is there proximate risk to you <clears throat> or is it a perceived risk to you? Mm-hmm. You know, because be, you know, a lot of folks confuse um, fear for for danger. True, true, right? Yep. Because I'm because I'm uncomfortable, I'm at risk. Mm-hmm. No, you're, you're uncomfortable. There was a shooting, but they were nowhere near you, nor were they shooting at you, nor were they coming towards you. They were actually going away. <laughs> They're going while, the other direction. While, while that is a risky behavior, you are actually not in danger because of that. Right. It is dangerous, but you are not in danger. You were just nervous. So, so we have mm-hmm. to understand the context by which people are giving us information. True. Also. Yeah. Right. Because we're on a 24 seven news cycle. You know, you get, if you have your phone, this thing right here, the phone alerts you to every second of what's going on no around the world. <laughs> well, I, I had a, I had a buddy the other day. Um, the short version of a very long story is yeah, he, he had just come back from New York city there okay. was that unfortunate tragedy in the shooting in the subway not too long ago, a couple of weeks back. Remember that, yeah. Bunch of people injured. Mm-hmm. And he starts texting me right away. And he's like, hey, man, I was just on that subway. We're supposed to go back this summer and take a field trip. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to let my kids go. I'm like, well, why not? He's like, well, the subway is dangerous. This, that, and the other thing. I'm like, well, first of all, take a breath. Because yes. did you get your kid a driver's license last week? Your kid's 16. Right. And the answer was, yeah. I said, you know how many people die on North Texas roadways? True. Sure. Right. And, and yet you, it, did, it didn't even cross your mind when you got him a driver's license. 
right? Right. They're driving a 6,000 pound bullet around and people drive like idiots all day long. Doesn't cross your mind. But this one anomaly shooting in New York City, which wasn't in New York City, was actually in the Bronx, right? Mm -hmm. That was doesn't affect you at all, brings out fear. And you're Mm -hmm. articulating that I'm not going to go on vacation because of this thing. I'm like, well, a couple things. A, I would take a deep breath and let it play out. And you'll find out that this isn't endemic. It is a anomaly. And that Mm -hmm. they'll probably run this to ground pretty quickly because there's some stuff you probably don't know yet. Right. True. But the other thing is, what what are you saying? Are you uncomfortable? Are you nervous? That is different from being at risk. I'm not totally. saying that some things aren't risky, but I'm saying everything doesn't require, you know, mm-hmm. we, ha- we, we have to stop dealing in the possible and we have to deal about the deal in the practical and the probable, right? Could a missile hit my backyard today? Yeah, it could. It's, sure. it's possible. Sure. It's not, it's not probable. So I'm not going to spend a bunch of money putting up a missile defense system around my house, right? <laughs> right. Be, be, because it's not practical. No, and and it's, not. it's possible, but it's not practical. So so it's that. It's, it's that concept that a business is asking me what is most likely to occur, what is probable, what is practical. Now, we have to bring up the possible so we don't get blindsided and say, well, we never thought that could even happen. <laughs> Because that's uniquely American too, where we think that, you know, unfortunately mm-hmm. it'll never happen to us and it happens all the time. True. Um, but but I but I say that too because we have to be careful about about that balance, which is the other reason that I, I go quite a bit. It's not that the organization's making me go, but I but I feel like there's a duty in understanding. And I can do a better job if I actually understand what you're saying. And that requires some work on my part. So that's not how it's going to stay, but it's how it's how it has to be at least in the short term. Yeah, you know, for me, it's like I'm I have several businesses I run, I'm partners in a couple, and I don't have the bandwidth to have CNN and Fox News and every other channel on, or look at my phone all day long. Yeah, I don't have the time, and I don't have the time to uh, entertain that information twenty four seven in my head because I got I only have a certain amount of bandwidth. To produce podcasts, to run my businesses, and to be productive and impact lives. I don't have the time. Like a lot of people, you know, in the EP industry, they live on Facebook. That's where they live. Hey, Mark, I just sent you a message on Facebook. I'm like, dude, I'm running three other things. I check yeah. Facebook once a day, if that. It's just you're you're busy. Um, people that are busy get things done. But I think a lot of the a lot of the EP agents they get so sucked in the information machine. And it never leaves their head, and they get like they get stuck in the possibility. But the real reality is the possibility are two different animals. And I think we we've been conditioned as a culture to believe there are certain things that are not true. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of mis and disinformation out there, and it's hard to decipher. It with, is with so much with so much out there. What's what? Um, but but I, but I think there's a trust but verify factor. But I think the other thing is right. you got to keep the main thing the main thing. The main thing and, exactly. You know what my my why is I you know I want to provide opportunity and exposure mm-hmm. for my wife and kids. There you go. So, so as long as I keep the why I do the why I do what I do, and I make time to enjoy those things, the what yeah. is a matter of process. And this isn't all day every day. I mean, I'm busy, but it's relative, right? Mm-hmm. Part of why part of why we were missing each other last week is because I actually took a vacation. I was nice. with my family, and I wasn't answering my phone. And I wasn't looking at the computer <laughs> because I was on vacation. And Good for you. you know, one of the one of the things we say is is yeah. that's also a conditioning in our space specifically is well, I'm going to take my phone and my computer because I'm never on vacation. Well, that's funny because the CEO takes a break, and that's Absolutely. the most accountable person in this organization. So. Uh-huh. If I look, if I look at, you know, my agreement with this organization, they pay me to be on vacation, which means that they expect me to take it and they pay me to do it. So I trust you enough to be <laughs> able to be a professional enough to do what needs to get done when I'm not around. Yeah. So for these four days, I'm not around. I'm out. I'll pick yeah. it up when we get back. I'll pick up my part when I get back. You got right. the cheat, right? There you go. There you go. <laughs> and, 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 and because if you don't take a time out, man, it'll destroy you. The work will yeah. always be there. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. Mm-hmm. It doesn't go away. And, and I, and this comes from a guy who could not relax. I don't know what relaxing is. I pace around my room now when I talk I'm on the phone, I walk, <laughs> I, I'm in a little, I walk around. Right. So, so, you know, 
for years I, I, I didn't take a vacation and then, uh-huh. you know, it, it'll, it will kill you. It will, it will literally, your body will shut you down if you don't take care of it and yourself too. So all the things that you pour into work and the other people, you have to pour the same amount or more into you first because you can't help others if you can't help yourself first. I am no good to anybody else dead. I am no good to anybody else injured. I am no good to anybody else as half of me. Mm. And I wasn't realizing that earlier in my career either. That, Gross. you know what, bro, sometimes you got to take a time out. Check out. Yeah, you, you got you to gotta let it go, man. It's, it's not that. I had a Marine tell me that in one of my assignments. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 I had a Marine colonel pull me aside and said, listen, I'm going to need you to work out t- twice a day because my man, your head's going to explode. And I was like, what are you talking about? For a Marine to tell me that in a combat zone is, think about that for a second. <laughs> I mean, think Holy about what we're <laughs> yeah, like, well, what are you saying to me? And he's like, you need to chill out, is what he was saying. And I, I had no idea. That You're in the battlefield and you had a lieutenant yeah. colonel tell you to chill out. I mean, you, you have a backpack of stress that you yeah. are carrying around and it's manifesting all kinds of ways that if you're not careful, you're not, you know, you, right. that goes back to the EQ part, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Stress, stress is like plaque. It just builds up and builds up until then you have a problem that you can't fix. So, so the idea is you can't let it build up that way. Right. I mean, there are, there are things that are stressful and there are things that require attention, but you got to keep the main thing, the main thing. And to your point, you run multiple businesses. Do those businesses run by themselves without you? If the answer is no, that means at some point you're going to have to take a break to make sure you have gas in the tank. You got to fill up. Exactly. You got to replenish the fuel. Otherwise, you'll run out of gas. Right? You'll run out of gas. <laughs> you'll be and stuck the on the side is, of the road. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, it's interesting. I had, uh, Monday, I just had to check out. I was like exhausted. You hit that wall. I'm like, you know what? I don't care if. If the, if the United States is burning down, I don't care. I'm checking out for yeah. the next six, six hours. I'm not returning any calls. I just, I had to mentally just take a break for about eight hours yeah. and come back to the, the chaos. And yeah. uh, you got to have balance, folks. You, you just got to have balance because, as Steve says, you know, he give you a perfect example being on the battlefield, having a lieutenant colonel tell him, hey, yeah, chill out and you're in war. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you mean, chill out? Well, and, and that, I think that's the other part, right? Is, is, yeah. um, is to your point about your your eight hour break turns out it was fine yeah like nothing nothing happened in that eight hours that actually required you to answer anyway and if it did somehow mm-hmm. yeah it was work it was worked out right so so learning to be okay with that too is is also a tenant that you have to trust your folks and you have to trust your team and you have to trust yourself to say you know what i, I need a break because I'm, I'm not really my the best version of me today Mm-hmm. And, and, and my, t- I can tell you my team, my team of professionals, when I'm the weakest link on a team, and yeah. I promise you that the team I work with now are some extremely talented and gifted individuals. I owe it to them to give my best to them as many days consecutively as I can. And when right. I cannot, I owe it to them to take a time out. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I'm playing, it's an all-star team. These folks are, they've done this. They've been there and done that mm-hmm. and they can see it. Right. It's kind, of, it's kind of like when you walk in the when you walk into your home, folks yeah. are like, "Hey, what's wrong?" You haven't said a word. All you do is walk in the room. They're like, "Hey, what's wrong?" They, they can know. see it. They know. They see in your face, right? Your body. So we have to we have to be in tune the same way and make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. That's a priority. And I know those guys in the EP industry, especially with the rural families coming in, those families usually work them to death for like two to three months straight without a day off. And if you know if you're in the industry, this industry is not worth your health and life. It's not. It's not. It's, it's not. Because the reality is, as soon as you go down, there'll be a replacement tomorrow. We'll be replacing you. So, so somebody <laughs> will get called tomorrow because somebody does send that post, right? So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You only get one shot at life, you know? Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, the health side. When you get older, you start realizing, I just hit a certain age and I'm like, holy crap, I'm throwing everything now. Marine Corps injuries, 
athletic injuries, being a bodyguard injury. It's like, it's, it's a funny, man. It's and, a battle. And now, and now what matters the most are, are, is different. Like, Hey man, investing in some quality shoes and socks matter. Like <laughs> you've do. heard that your entire life, right? <laughs> Never more than now. Like, man, I, I got a pair of these uh, super thick orthotics when I'm walking around the house. I'm like, man, my feet, my feet feel like I'm walking on clouds. People laugh at those. <laughs> people laugh at Skechers. I'm like, you can laugh all you want to. My feet are heavenly at the moment. <laughs> Now, are you a believer in like therapy, body massages and stuff too for recovery? Does that relax you? What's your relaxation scoping feel? You know, I, I, I like working out um, because I still struggle with just calm. calm? Like okay. my, my, in, you, ever, you remember those old computers that they would just run, they would just cut on the background. You hear this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what happens to me, right? So, <laughs> so, so, so my, my idea of, of relaxation is either in transit in an audio book because I'm forced to sit in a spot for a period of time. So I have to fill it with something that keeps me engaged okay. or go to a gym, ride a Peloton, something that's active and engages me, but exhausts me. Exhausts that, that actually relaxes me. You know what I mean? Okay. Because I feel like for, for me, and then that's just me. Like I, I feel like, Oh, there's more to do. There's more to do. I'm like a Jack Russell, right? And, and, and it's, it's not always fun to live with, right? My wife will tell you in a minute. Like, it's cool sometimes. It's not cool all the time. <laughs> cool, <okay. laughs> oh, my God. We cover a lot of ground today. Uh, yeah. I know you got a busy day. You kind of have the day off, Steve, so we appreciate your time. Do you have any, you know, parting words to the audience that's listening right now, military guys, law enforcement guys, or just any advice? Yeah, I, I, I would. I would give a couple of things. If you're changing careers, if you're leaving uh, public service and you're going into private industry, do not allow yourself to get discouraged because it's not easy. And there's a lot of talented folks that get told no, which we're not used to, right? We, we've been right. doing things for a long time and we've been very good at it and it's hard to start fresh. Mm -hmm. um, but part of that is market saturation. Part of that is remember the skills that you want to talk about the most are not necessarily the most valuable to the private sector, mm. right? The ability to make decisions under pressure, to willfully want to make decisions under pressure is valuable. Mm -hmm. The ability to relate and to communicate is valuable. The ability to engage with others and bring them together and connect and to listen and to be patient is valuable. We wanna talk about the high speed, low drag stuff and that stuff matters. Right. That talks about your ability, capability, acumen that matters. Mm -hmm. But but those other things matter also. So don't neglect those. Don't neglect the fact that you're a real human being and you have real emotion. Don't shy away from the things that we, we used to shy away from all the time. I'm not saying that you need to be some sappy individual when you're describing what you want to do. But but also know that the main thing is the main thing. And that you served your country in whatever capacity for a very long time. You're looking to continue to serve in a way that's meaningful. But what matters now is I'm moving into a new phase. So I want to do this. And then I want to enjoy that. Mm -hmm. and, and don't settle for less than that. There's plenty of folks that will work you to death. Right. The question is, do you want to do that again? Right. True. So don't so, so don't 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 get discouraged. Right. Because it, it is it's hard to get through the systems. It's, it's hard to get the interviews, but you know, when I was my most authentic, because I didn't think I was going to change is when I was most successful. And then what I, then, then I realized the authenticity is what is the most valuable. I just say it. And I ask, I mean, I, you know, I'm diplomatic and professional and those things, but, but I ask you, what are you asking me? You want to hear the company line or do you just want me to tell you? Because here, 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 here's the thing, right? Here's the perspective. Right. So here's what we need to think about. Here's why I'm saying that. Here's what it solves. So, you know, it, it, you have to be diligent because it's not, it's nothing's easy. Nothing worth having is easy. Right. Amen to that. So, amen to that, brother. Well, folks, this is Steve, uh, Vice President of Global Security at Pepsi Cola. Took some time to join us. And uh, please follow him on LinkedIn. If you have any questions for me or him, reach out to us on LinkedIn or follow the show on the uh, website link there and we're on iHeartRadio and Spotify and all those things. So thanks for tuning in and thanks Steve for his time. And we'll see you on the next episode and we appreciate Steve and we appreciate the audience for listening and we'll talk to you all soon.